the cocktails with Tia and the Jays. I'm Turquoise. This is my mom, Janice, and my sister, Janice. And today we have a few topics to discuss with you all. Um, the unfortunate passing of Johnny Brown. Um, you guys may know him as Bookman from Good Times. And then Asia Maynard, her murder. McKeith Lloyd's sentence. Michael K. Williams suspects plead not guilty. And much more. Um, so, I, of course, we do want to give our condolences to Johnny Brown's family. Um, he played Bookman on the Good Times show. Um, and he was a he was a, com a comedian, a singer. His daughter is, act is uh, also an actress. She had I remember seeing her on, I think on Fresh Prince. I think she was like one of Hillary's friends, and she's been in a whole bunch of other things. But he um, passed away on March second, and he was eighty four years old. Well, he'll go down in history as an icon. Yes, yes. Um, so I do want to talk about Asia Maynard. So. She is, I believe she's 20, she was 27 years old. Let me pull this up here. Oh, pardon me, she was 29 years old and she was uh, found dead on February 19th in a residence um, in Kansas City. So we had a, a similar situation uh, story we talked about before to where a young black lady went on a date with a Caucasian man and end up um, being dead. And so it was, you know, thought of that he was the suspect. Uh, same with this story. She, she dated um, a Caucasian man. He's now being seen as a suspect. And her family, of course, wants answers. Um, How did she die? Let me see here. Was it a drug overdose? I don't know. They were trying to rule her death as a natural cause of a natural cause. So it, yeah, that's what I mean. So, like, like a natural cause is something that um, your body, body does, does naturally. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's saying here, sorry, I'm reading along, that she could have had fentanyl in her system. So what is the drug? It's what her friends are saying, but. Yeah, that's kind of like with the last case. Uh -huh. They're not getting it. Her family isn't getting answers. So this is a very sad story. And then like you and I discussed earlier, um, how a lot of males are saying, Particularly black males. Saying that's what she, she get did for, for messing with of her white race. guy. Oh, wow. I've seen guys like celebrating her death and I'm like, what the hell happened to her? And then I thought about the story that we talked about. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, so... And then I, they mentioned, you know, the divestors. There's a community of black women that call themselves divestors where they're no longer dating black men. And they were basically poking fun at these women who, you know, call themselves divestors. It's all ridiculous. I'm like, I don't care, like, how so much somebody irritates you. I would never ce celebrate the death of anyone. That's, that's weird and very cruel and inhumane. And it also makes me think I had a conversation with a guy in one of these like manospheres group. I told you guys I was going to be like, I got sucked into the rabbit hole and I'm just kind of observing. When I, a guy came at me and was like, uh, the reason why a lot of black women, because I said, you know, you know, that black women die every five hours at the hands of a black man. And this black man says to me, the reason why black women are dying so much is because we're combative and we're uh, over emotional, we're logical, and we're crazy. So are you saying that a black woman can irritate somebody so much to the point you feel like you can put hands on her and kill her, harm her, because you don't like her attitude? You're saying you're murderous. And he's like, well, y'all caused it. And I'm like, this is crazy to me. The, the, this is the mentality going on. Like, there's no justification for harming someone. And I wouldn't say no, there's no justification for what happened to this woman. And if this man did anything for her to take drugs and overdose, he should be held accountable. But I don't think that is not something to be celebrated, nor does it justify murder at the hands of black men, at black women, because 90% of black women are murdered by black men, usually that they know. I agree, Mom. What do you think about that? Okay. All right, um, so moving along. Okay, so I want you to go down to 
the picture of Lakeith Lloyd. It's the fourth one down. All right, so I'm not sure if you all are familiar with the story, but Lakeith Lloyd, he um, was sentenced to the death. Well, let me backtrack. He was sentenced to life in prison in 2017 for killing his pregnant ex-girlfriend at the time. And then he went on the run. So there was a big men hunt for him. Uh, officer, a female officer located him, was going to, you know, arrest him, and he ended up murdering her. So he, and pardon me, her name is uh, Deborah Clayton. And so he was finally um, sentenced to the death penalty this past Thursday for her murder. He tried to play like he was not competent enough to stand, you know, trial. He said that he's terrified of the police. He has trauma because he's missing his, his left eye. So when the officers caught him after he uh, murdered Deborah Clayton, it was uh, said that they beat him. They, to the point where he lost his eye. Yep, yeah, they kicked him. They beat him with a rifle, and he ended up losing his left eye. Granted, that's horrible, but he took the life of his pregnant so girlfriend. So, what was the reason child. for him killing the girlfriend? He was he afraid of her too? And the a female officer. The um, so I just wanted to say that, but he, yeah, he was. It's not all sound like excuses to me. This I, yeah. I, I hate how people use like mental issues as justification for doing heinous acts. It's ridiculous to me. I there are people that have whole, like serious serious mental issues that would never harm a fly. So you cannot use mental issues as an excuse for wanting to harm other people. Yeah, you have to be accountable for your own. Have to be accountable for your actions. Well, you got anything to say on that? Okay. Yeah, this will be a quick show. <laughs> um, I hate to always talk about people being murdered or killed. Yeah, but, but it happens. It happens. Yeah. Um, our next story, so Brandon Cervera was arrested in San Antonio, Texas. Um, he's 28 years old. So the thing, okay, so what they're saying is that he murdered his son, his young son. He was starving him, refused to give him water. He made him drink hand sanitizer. The, um, the young boy ended up passing away. And this was his biological son. Yeah. Yeah, he ended up passing away in uh, 2021. And he's been charged with, um, you know, the murder of his son. So the police officers found footage on his cell phone um, of the young boy begging for water, begging for food. And I'm just kind of like, how can you do that, let alone to anyone, but to your own child, to a family member? That totally, um, it, it didn't surprise me because it's been... People have been torturing kids and torturing women and all this for years, but it still doesn't change the fact that it's so disturbing. Mm -hmm. You know, I also, um, I can I cannot, because I wasn't going to bring him up. So you're but, thinking of the special, the boy who, they did this special one on Netflix. Um, the little black boy? No, there's, well, no, this guy, uh, this was a little Hispanic boy, but um, there's multiple stories. There's too many. There's yeah, too many. that story we talked about yeah. not too long ago, but there was one, and it just popped up on my um, news feed. It was just a picture of him, the only picture of him, and it was in black and white, and it was him in the hospital, and I think it, he was in Georgia, and his grandmother um, was, like, starving him, mm. but, and there would be times to where, like, she would feed him little amounts of oatmeal, um, she burnt the bottom of his feet, and he was still going to school, yeah. and there was a lot of CPS calls. They would go out to the house and say, oh, he's not in danger until the little boy was found dead. Then they arrested the, the grandmother. But I kept seeing that on my um, Facebook feed and also on uh, YouTube. But that was, that was awful. Uh, all right, moving along. Well, Ma, do you have anything to say about that? It's sad. I have something to say about that. Because oh, yes, this, is, this is just like too common. And the fact that you even said, like, CPS is usually involved in a lot of these cases. What bothers me about situations like this is you'll see kids get taken away from parents that actually are taking care of them, mm -hmm. that actually are loving them and doing what they're supposed to do. It's just something about them that they don't like, and they take these children away. When you see children that are seriously in danger, they're starving, they come to school with bruises and marks and things like that, and you don't even think 
well, maybe they're in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And and you don't, like, seriously investigate it. Like, you don't see what's caught, what are the cause of these injuries? How are they getting these injuries? Why aren't y'all investigating things like that? Why is it only when you find out that the parent has smoked weed and failed a drug test or something like that that you want to take their kids? That is so weird to me. But what you see children that are actually being abused, neglected, starving, mm-hmm. and you don't do, it's the same like with abuse of women. You'll see them getting beat up. They'll come to work with black eyes and shit, and they'll put protection orders out and stuff, and nothing is done until these people are dead. These women and children are dead. Mm-hmm. It's so weird to me that how the system is working like that. You take away kids from parents that are actually loving and treating them good, but leave the kids that are actually being neglected and abused in those situations. It's like, what the fuck is CPS for? They do that for the girl fighter that can make a documentary I think off of it and make I've, money. Or I feel like, honestly, it's more of like they're looking for people to put in prison. That's why they go more at people like that are smoking weed and shit like that. But they Even can though, put the people and parents for, for um, endangering a child. Right, right. But yeah. they're not doing that. Yeah. So I'm just saying there's a, there's a lot of I mean if you're that's you know, a that's you can a do assault assault uh, jail, child abuse neglect child all of that yeah. child endangerment all they're not thinking to put any of those charges on these people but you're taking children away from people that like smoked weed it's weird to me because I've seen people that have smoked weed get their children taken away that's awful but um yeah something has to be done something has to be done. Um, okay, so moving along. So, Michael K. Williams, we all know he passed away, I believe, September 10th of 2021 mm-hmm. from a drug overdose. Loved him so much. Yeah. Um, so, I believe it was four guys that was charged with providing him with the drug that he overdosed on. But they're pleading not guilty now. And there's video footage of Michael K. Williams making the, the transaction, the purchase, the exchange. Mm. So we talked about this earlier yeah. too, mm-hmm. how when police are starting to be, or the state are starting to be able to charge drug dealers for um, the deaths of those, the addicts who overdose, like how is that going to turn out? Yeah. Like I feel like it's an awful thing, but ultimately you are You're accountable for your own yeah. actions. So if you feel like you want to take a drug, nobody you, is forcing it down yeah. your throat. Well, they feel like black people making money now, but back in the day when they had the mafia and stuff and people was dying, that, they didn't want to put uh, nobody in jail or nothing like that. You know, it's mostly everything is geared toward getting rid of other races, not helping the kids that need help that's black or Mexican, not white or whatever. Because white people do way more drugs than we, and they still got their kids. Well, I mean, the disparage, the difference is clearly evident in how the op- uh, the reaction to opioids versus the crack em- epidemic. They were arresting the drug dealers, but they were also arresting the crackheads. And that, like, was very detrimental. They okay, weren't... the opiates is gave by the doctors. doctors Why yeah. aren't they arresting They them? have arrested some doctors, but... So. Some, not, it's very minimum. Not as much as they were cracking down on, you know, these uh, drug dealers in the streets. Like, they're not cracking down that much. But the reaction to the people that are suffering from, you know, opioid addiction is vastly different from the reaction that they have for crackheads. And then, and the sad thing about it. Took- Cocaine, crack and cocaine. And then, you know, cra- yeah, crack and cocaine are literally the same thing. Except they one put has the drugs so out and then started a D.A.R.E. program telling the yeah, kids telling don't you not do to drugs. Do it. Yeah, well, I like to say it was like the, the husband put the drugs out and the wife was telling the kids not to do it. But they were not know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, if she was making yeah, she money was, yeah, and telling yeah, your kids and telling don't, don't do just, drugs. Just say no. And the whole just mm-hmm. say no thing. And that but, was just an attempt to put a lot of to me, different races in population. jail. Population control. Yeah. Well, or no, more like because if you go to school and she telling they telling you don't do drugs and your parents doing most likely a lot yeah. of and I said I mentioned um, population control because a lot of people die from overdose. I wouldn't even say population control. I would say more of a industrial uh, business 
of thing because what happens when these people go to prison they have them doing jobs for big corporations that are making millions of dollars it's basically slavery something they, Legal, they make it's us basically do every day. it's basically it's free working, labor working free labor like you did something wrong so mm-hmm. now you lose your rights as a citizen where i could put you in this facility make you work for no money and other people could get rich and off you know of the what? work you're that's doing that's not true because you get paid in jail for work what, not no, much no, what 50 17 cents cent? yeah like, like but but, but look you ain't got no rent you ain't paying for gas electricity <laughs> You ain't got to worry about paying no cable You ain't got no soft You ain't got no transportation. You can't watch cable. <laughs> the, the argument is that they do they do, they do be having access Where to Where everybody stuff. has to watch t- 200 people to versus you turning on your TV set and watching something but that's you want to see. Of when but, you but commit a crime. That's not, that's not the well, issue there. Well, I don't there. say commit a crime. Uh, that's not the issue there. Yes, they have access to stuff, but the point of the matter is they're locked up in these facilities to do free labors to, to benefit big corporations where they make make money off of prisoners doing these jobs. So why wouldn't you ha- they you have to have uh that's what capitalism basically is. You have to well, have that's what you could, that uh, happens outside of being in in jail. Y- but at least That's you're at least period. getting something out of it when you're you can have the ability to climb the corporate ladder when you're outside of, even when they get out they they're not allowed to do certain jobs half, half the times companies don't want them to work for them because they've been in prison or if they have something on their record or and a felon a lot of companies like to hire felons because they get they a get a credit, credit. credit. but they're also not getting that much pay That's what I was going to say there's tax credits for just like that's true uh, tax credits for hiring those who are on welfare or gets any kind of state assistance that's mm-hmm. true it's just all over it just goes all around, and so around. The but, around. but every i say black people who don't benefits get from nothing. all of this yeah, the big no, corporations I, that's I'm the point agreeing. i'm making i'm agreeing yeah. with you the white people because we don't have no big corporations <laughs> i'm sure we do what i name don't it. have anything so i name know our I big corporation that benefits black people right there are a lot like if you if you really think about it, there are a lot of corporations that okay black next black show we'll like, talk about um, it um our cousin was just talking about the was it jack daniel or some whiskey thing but that didn't benefit that, black people the, the they matter of fact got shunned that person never got credit for it they're just not no, getting credit now i was about to say his his great 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 granddaughter is running it now yeah so i'm just saying that's there good, are that is there good. are things out there black people there have, are people that are thriving but, don't get but, me wrong yeah i'm saying you can't shut it down because black people are doing their thug biz so like if you know there are black people that are media, thriving there yes. are millionaires billionaires look at uh what what's his, um yo Gotti's wife what she's doing with her little exercise thing not yeah is it not yo Gotti, um the other dude gucci man like oh. people, black people are building corporations. Yeah, they are. So you can't say that they're not. Yeah. We're I not said, doing it with the help of those who don't not. This, but that's but not what still, I said, though. I said one big corporation. <laughs> it was me. The, I said what big corporation has benefited the black community as a whole? No corporation. That's all I was saying. None at all. That's all I was saying. Has any white corporations benefited us either? No. No, but they benefited white people. How? (laughs) They all rich and we had to start from No, they're not all rich. I'm just saying that they're... You know what? I do not see that many poor white people. Even if they poor, they family rich and they want to live the life of being druggies and shit like that. I know some poor white people. I wouldn't say that. Nah. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. We we can't generalize. Uh, well, no, I, I would like never to generalize. No, but that's what I would. That's the no, point. I, I, I would making. never do that. We, that's me. Generalizing. I was just saying, as a big corporations like, like, have only provided if, if, and help. Ninety percent of the people in corporate they, uh, America are not. But they're all are they're still not homeless people. Color who people are of color. Caucasian. So I'm, I'm, that's because they want to be out there. How is that? I'll tell you. Because they want to be out there. I think this you would be a good time to talk it. about the I Ukraine did. situation. Too late. I already did. Uh, do you want me to lead with that? Yeah. Okay, so there is a war going on. Basically, Russia invaded Ukraine. And, you know, as sad as it is, you know, there's a huge, like, discrepancy into the reaction to the war going on in Ukraine with Russia invading Ukraine. 
First thing is, yes, it's sad. War is never good. You you hate to see people losing their homes and having to flee. That Nobody wants to be in that situation. I cannot imagine, you know, bombs coming through my house and I have nowhere to go, I have to go live in the fucking subway. That's horrible. But one thing that stands out about this situation with, in the news media, the way the reporters are reporting this, they'll say things like, oh, uh, you're used to seeing like stuff like this happen in Iraq and Ukraine. Or not in Ukraine, you, you're used to seeing stuff like this happen in Syria. You're used to seeing stuff like that happen in Afghanistan. This isn't normal, this is a European country. These are people with blonde hair and blue eyes. These are people that look like us. You're, you, this shouldn't happen in a European country. They're blatantly making it obvious that they think it's okay. That's they carry all the power. They think it's okay for people, it doesn't even matter if you're not black, as long as you're not white, they think this is okay. And they're saying it in the media. And yeah. it's like, you're like, I'm seeing these white news reports. Why supposed to be on white? We supposed I'm like, to be right. on I'm, I'm looking at these races. news reports like, y'all not even hiding it anymore. Y'all making it blatantly obvious. They haven't obvious. been hiding it. Like, the, you're, like the, you're admitting that you feel more sorry for the Ukrainian people because they're white than you would somebody in Syria because they're not white. And that is just so. That's why I feel that is so crazy. And then, then also, you like you feel sorry for the Ukrainians. And then I hear how they're doing. You know, the black people that are were out there for schooling and stuff. All of these refugees places that are wanting to help the Ukrainian people, letting them come into cross the borders. They're shunning the black Mm -hmm. people. They're shunning the black people. They're not letting the black people come through. Isn't that cr- and they're in Ukraine too, fleeing the same situation, and they're not letting the black people come through. That's why and I feel white people really don't but, care about no other race, but they are. And I don't care if you well, got that, two the news, or three. The way the or, media is reporting five, it, they that, make it blatantly that, obvious. That, mm-hmm. They always do and always have. Now they just getting called out on the stuff. And I saw the most uh, realist report, like somebody was interviewing a. a he was an African student in Ukraine, I saw and that. you see that. How they asked him, uh, you know, are you gonna willing to fight for Ukraine stand? Because a lot of the citizens are staying to join the soldiers, uh, the soldiers to help fight against Russia. And the African dude, he was like, "Fight them for what?" <laughs> he said, "Fight them for what?" Uh, it said, "As soon as they see me, they gonna think I'm a part of NATO or like kill the black guy first. Why the hell would I do that? They're not gonna see me as Ukrainian. When they look at me, they don't see a Ukrainian. They see an African or a black person. They see me as somebody interfering in what they're doing." So why the fuck would I fight? And I agree with him. Mm-hmm. And they're not even letting people like him fucking cross the borders that are fleeing. Countries are shunning them. But you want him to stand there and fight? Fuck that shit. That was the realest interview I seen because he was like, hell no. Nah, why the That's fuck why would I? That's why Muhammad Ali didn't go to war because he said some people hadn't did nothing. He said they did nothing to me. He mm-hmm. said you want me to go over there? You you want me to go over there and fight over there for something you believe? You won't even stand up for me here at home. He was right. And I like, this is crazy. To say to you, uh, reporters, that just goes to show you that anybody can get it. Anybody. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what color hair you got, what color eyes you got, what's your skin tone. Anybody. Anybody can get it. Nobody's immune from shit like this happening. And the mm-hmm. fact that people want to pick and choose who deserves respect and who doesn't, who deserves the right to live and who doesn't, that's crazy as fuck to me. Have your beliefs, but don't put your beliefs on me. Mm-hmm. We all have the right to live. The world is a big world. God put the world here for all of us. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. And God put this here for you and me. Exactly. All right. Um, well, I kind of think that. Let's see what else can we go into. You guys want to keep going? Did you have more? That's kind of all I have. That's all you had? <laughs> well, that's good enough for me. You got anything else? Well, I do. Tupac would like to <laughs> say to all them haters around the way. Can you see my shirt? I actually can see one of your things. What is it? I love that Tupac. Mm-hmm. He, I love Tupac. Tupac is a man. I, I want to say, because uh, I saw, you know, although I don't like keep having to talk about Kim and Kanye, but I saw DL um, respond to make a, and I was like, this is like the first guy I've seen that actually called this behavior out because abuse 
abusive behavior should be called out. And I just want to give props to D.L. Hughley for calling it out. Because he always like, calls like, out like, stuff. That's why people don't like him, because he's really yeah, honest. Yeah, he called it out. And I, I like, like him because God, of that. man finally did, because it's like everybody making a joke out of this shit is not funny. No. It's not funny. It's not. And she's uh she's been declared single. Yeah, she did win her case to become yeah. You know what, single. to be honest, I ain't trying to be funny, but she was single when she was <laughs> with him. <laughs> Well, he was the one messing with other girls. Y'all can, oh, you think, she, look, she wasn't on that videotape, made everybody famous for nothing. Okay? He and Ray J didn't tell y'all. He hit it first. He probably didn't But her, what does her first. past have to do but with hell, he, At least he can say he was first. But what does her past have to do hey, with Hey, it has done? a lot to do Ow. with it because I think they drove him crazy. No, I think he his was mom crazy. Sorry, but you know what? His sorry, mom crazy. passing and you over there, then all of a sudden Kanye thought he wasn't even black no more. He started talking like he was white. Well, now of he's black and his black children. He only using that now to gain sympathy because they breaking up. Fuck that okay, shit. Okay, well, we're going to keep going. We can talk about Delicious and her um, boo thing in a divorce. Well, oh. So he his name is Ray, it's Raymond. He's one Santana. of the Central Park Five. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they just got married. I think it was like two years ago. June 2020. Mm. And he filed for divorce just this month. Oh. Because of and her ass. What did she do? She posted. How, go, how it was she her fault? wrong? No, it was her fault because like nothing, nobody knew anything. Side, dude, well, too. nobody had said anything. One day she just gonna post on social media. It was a picture of her and him, and her caption said, "I married a narcissist, selfish person, and I am ready to tell my story. Stay tuned." And then like a day later, he filed for a divorce. And then also she changed her caption within like an hour or two. Yeah, because. But people caught it, like yeah. people screenshot it and Cause I posted did. it everywhere. Cause she, I was like, why the fuck would she do that? Like, and then he was like, and I, he, I saw him on them on the couples retreat. He seemed like a nice guy, mm -hmm. and I, a lot of people were saying she only married him because of the money he got from the settlement from being locked away. That she just wanted money, and I'm like, if that's the case, and then if you heard that she was cheating on him, because I didn't hear all of that. All I know, I is didn't she made hear that nothing. I was just no. Talking. I was saying that because she had posted oh. something about having a site. She and, said she had a site, and I don't know what's a joke or whatever. And he and his response was, "You can have her, something like that. I'm good." So that's just. But she had posted he really, that. that he he really seemed like nice a nice guy. guy. Yeah. I, I mean, on that couple of retreats, I don't know. Like, because things is different. Yeah, doors. behind closed doors, but, I get that. But but she was so acting like herself on the couple She was. Retreat. She really was. They was doing some kind of wild stuff on there, but like he was still that. nice. Yeah, I'm saying he was nice, yeah. but she was still. Was doing some you can tell she kind of has some kind of behaviors. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he was she seemed like the aggressive to, one in the relationship. Yeah, he, he seemed, seemed like very he was mellow. Always just trying to chill. Yeah, he seemed very mellow, time. and she seemed to be like the aggressive one, like just from the way they interacted on yeah. couples retreat. Well, they've been separated, I think, since November. Oh, and I sorry, um, I did have another. Uh, topic. It was the um, death of Miss Alabama, um, oh. Zoe mm -hmm. um, Bethel. Mm. So, okay, so the story, I think she passed, was it February 19th? Part, excuse me if I'm, you know, if I'm incorrect. But she had fell off of a third story um, floor. Be. Yeah. And uh, from a, con a condo in Miami. And so, first How'd she fall? She know. got pushed. Was so there anybody there with her? We don't know. I still haven't heard any of Because like they're saying about the the beauty pageant lady who jumped, like they said, committed mm -hmm. suicide. She jumped from her. I still balcony. haven't ha uh, heard any uh, update. Like, I think she was at. I think she went to the club and then went home or whatever. She could have also been and, drunk and fell. Yeah, but they tried to like hide it for a, a while because she was in the hospital and then mm. I think nobody really heard of anything until she, she was, was so died. young and pretty oh, too. Yeah. I think she may have been 27. Yeah, mm. she's yeah, she's very young. Yeah. Very young. And uh, they, so when I was following up um, today on the story, because I try to keep up with updates, um, they didn't say anything about any suspicion or what else they discovered, but they were saying it's like she was hiding or trying to get over her past. I guess they said she had like a lot of childhood trauma. So they're kind of, to me, I feel like they're trying to put her family in a bad light. Like they uh, mentioned how her, mom and dad were like pastors and 
really big in church and used to make her go around saying God hate gays and used to make her and her siblings wear shirts that say God hate gays, all kinds of stuff like Maybe, that. Maybe, you know what, like, they oh, might have made her, this was before she passed? This is her, part of her childhood. I know, but were they saying all this stuff? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I just, I just now uh, Cause read you know about what, people is always trying to say stuff and they don't even really know. Mm-hmm. You know, it's they're sad. just kind of taking ga- guesses, basically. Mm-hmm. They don't know. Because I was saying maybe if they think they know and try to put that stuff out there, that could. But who knows? Mm-hmm. I, it could have been an accident. She could have been going through some trauma, but they don't know the cause of that. To try to pin it on people that weren't even there at the time, I feel is wrong. Yeah. Okay, I know what it is. Y'all don't want me to say it. What? Because she's black? No, a white person pushed her off that balcony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any final uh, words, thoughts? <laughs> we are the world. Everybody deserves to be here of all races and colors. You know what? I'm going to hang with the aliens. I'm not saying. I'm going to hang with the aliens. But I'm not suck. saying yeah, they don't suck. deserve to be here, but they've been running things for far too long. It's time for other races to get a chance. Or and, 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 we could all and, just live in harmony. Nobody has to rule over anybody. How we don't live in harmony with people that I mean, don't want to live in harmony has with to rule us? Not bone thugs, okay? In harmony. I would like to think that I'm relatively close to them. I'm busy. I'll you just said lot, we're not bone thugs. You just said you, you said you uh, said uh, we're not bone thugs, and then said I'm busy. No, listen, we're not bone thugs in harmony. But I'm saying okay. I'm like B. We're B left thugs. the group. Okay, so and I'll throw a water bottle at somebody. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not aggressive. Wrong. No, you're not. <laughs> not. Like, I wish lying. you were. This girl lying. She ain't lying at all. If it was, if well, it don't need to be. I'll throw a bottle before you would. Two Janice Joneses. I don't have the woman my mama is. Then yeah. Well, I don't have anything else, do you? No. You all? No. Why don't we always have like a slow start and then like... Well, I well the okay, end, since we, we have, have time, say. I'll, I'll say something that wasn't on there. And this is just my opinion. I figured I out so. why a lot of states don't want to make marijuana legal. legal. Why? Police officers, governors, mayors, they're the drug dealers. If they make it legal... They ain't going to get their share. They making all the money now. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. And they selling it. If you make it legal, the government gets the taxes on it. They don't get to just walk out, steal people's shit, and resell it. That's what I thought. That's my thoughts. You think that the government feels like they make more money by confiscating no, drug No, I said mayors and police officers. I, 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 I said I if this, it was legal, the, the government. government would get their share. Okay. That's what I said. Okay. You know what I think? Welcome to Vegas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love Vegas and Cali. And I'm going back. Oh, and... Um, <coughs> Birthday girl here. We want to oh, shout yeah. out happy birthday to the birthday girl. to my baby. She's, uh, what, how old are you now? She's tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll be what? 34. 34? 30, 34, yeah. <laughs> but you look 12. You, you look 12. You look like a 12. Well, I'm going to do it like it's my B-Day tomorrow. Yeah. Do it like all it's your right. B-Day. Well, thank you all for tuning in. See thank you, you for joining show. us. <laughs>